Joined on the broadcast by assistant coach of the Cameron Junior B minor, Sean Ferguson, a former Junior B player in his own right. His club getting ready to head into the league finals against the East Hans Penguins coming up this Saturday. Sean, tell us about the season thus far in the matchup against East Hans for the league title. Hey, Pat, thanks for having me. We're getting ready to start up the NSJHL finals against East Hans, a real good team from the Fred Fox division. We've had a pretty good season in our own right. We finished first in our division, and we've had a fairly good playoff so far. I think we're 8-1 and one so far. We have one loss in the second round there. Seem to be clicking pretty well. We're getting some good goaltending, and it's been a good year. Now, as you mentioned, you're taking on a team from the Fred Fox division. For those that don't follow the league super closely, you come into the Sid Rowe division. How do you gauge yourself against teams from the other division? Do you see a lot of them in the regular season? We play the other division twice per year, once at home, once on the road. It's usually pretty hard to get a gauge just simply because of injuries and players in and out and different reasons with school and stuff like that. And we played in East Hans and lost a close game, I believe. It was in overtime. I wasn't there for that. I was I missed the road trip. And, and then they came down to member two and beat us 9-7 in a burn burner. So they score lots, and we're going to have our hands full, but I feel like we're up to the test for sure. Well, it'll be a fun series to watch if it's anything like a 9-7 game. Now, yeah. for those that don't know a lot about the Junior B product, where do the players come from? Is it primarily a mix of ex-high school and major midget guys? Would that be an accurate statement? Yeah, our program has done an excellent job of keeping guys home. Sonny McDougall, the owner and GM, just has built such a great reputation that guys seem to want to stay around. We've done a good job of getting guys from high school teams around here and the tradesmen, and we've even had some guys come from Cape Breton West in different years and things like that. It seems to have become a place where players want to stay and play for sure. Now you look at the Rinkin member too, they've done a good job of attracting clients such as the club you're involved with. Were you involved with the team when they moved to member two? Walk us through that process and how has that been as a home arena for the Miners? I joined the team last year in January after I started the year coaching with Riverview, uh, Daryl McDonald and Riverview, and we lost the season due to the work to rule, so I was lucky enough to have an opportunity to join the Miners as an assistant, and I ended up walking into what I would call the best dressing room in any of the Junior B teams in our league. We've been real lucky to have that rink and that facility and just what it comes with. Our dressing room is flawless. We have a player's room, coach's room, laundry room, nice big dressing room, nice big bathroom. It would be on par with any major junior room. It's pretty impressive for sure. We've been real lucky to have it. And how about the crowds? I know the Game 7 last year in the Sid Rowe final, which unfortunately you end up on the wrong end of, but there was a big crowd for that. What's the support like on a regular basis? Yeah, we do all right with a crowd. I think it's hard to get a following just simply because of the different hockey going on, like the Eagles and the Tradesmen and the Major Bantams plus high school and all that. But we seem to do okay. And every year it's like this. We play pretty late into the season, so it seems to be getting better as we go, which is great. You need that kind of support late in the playoff run and for the Atlantics that we're hosting. Tell us about the bigger names and bigger stars on the ice for your team. If people come out to a minors game, who should they be watching for? We're really deep up front, Pat. I would argue we have the deepest forward core in the league. We have guys like Nolan Smith, who's in his 21-year-old year, Kelly Yates in his 21-year-old year. We acquired Keegan Merrick, who's also a 21 at the trade deadline, and Chris Osmond, who's our fourth overager. He's a defenseman. We have a ton of depth up front, and we have a pretty steady blue line, too, a young blue line. Those guys get better every night. We also went out and acquired Levi Denny from the Pirates. He's a goalie from Escazoni, actually. He's been real good for us. We've been running a three-goalie tandem. That's been extremely good for us. Logan Cook from Glace Bay, Kane Drake from the Waterford, and Levi have been very steady for us. So we've been pretty lucky with the depth, absolutely. You are a young coach in the fraternity. Is that common to have guys that are kind of just graduates of the junior program themselves hop in just a few years later and tell us what that's like being a younger coach in the junior rank? Yeah, it definitely has its challenges being young with this age group. I think sometimes it's hard to gain the respect that you might want as a coach, but it's also nice because I can relate on the player level simply because it hasn't been that long since I played. It seems to be a common trend in our league. I see a lot of young coaches out there in the other teams and former players that I actually played against that seem to be trying to get involved with their teams. It's really nice to see that guys are kind of giving back and getting involved because it reflects on how much fun they had when they played for their organizations. Yeah, and not something you see frequently at higher levels, but tie into this series, you see Ryan Falkenham behind the Drummondville bench, and he's not too far removed from his Q career, so I guess you see yes, it on exactly. levels. Lastly, yeah. we'll ask about the Atlantics that you talked about, the Don Johnson Cup. Tell us a bit about that event. Yeah, so we're hosting the Don Johnson this year in number two 
It starts up on April 24th, I believe, Tuesday night. We're actually going to be playing against East Hans that Tuesday night again as the Nova Scotia plays the host team. And there will be teams from all over Atlantic provinces. There's a Newfoundland representative, a New Brunswick representative. I'm pretty sure that there's a PEI representative as well. I'm not 100% sure how that works because I believe they joined league, but I'm not sure how that works. But anyways, those teams will be down here for that full week of hockey. Should be some real good hockey. I know the Newfoundland representative, well, it's not decided yet, but there's a team over there that's had an incredible season. So there's going to be lots of talent, and it's going to be a tough road for sure. But, I mean, we built our team around the fact that we're going to be hosting. So we've got lots of players and lots of talent, and we're hoping that we built the team that can win at that level. Well, I'll be curious to see how it plays out. Best of luck heading into the tournament. Best of luck in the finals. Thanks for telling us all about it, Sean. Pat, thanks for having me, pal. That's Sean Ferguson. He's assistant coach of the Cameron Junior B Miners as they head into the league finals and eventually the Atlantic Championship coming up. You're listening to the intermission of Car Star, K-Brown, Screaming Eagles Hockey, 1270 CJCB.